with me to uh, Acts chapter number 27 this morning. <clears throat> and uh, it's been a little challenging, been a little challenging this week, uh, not feeling well and, and having energy so low and, and so start trying to study or whatever, but God's faithful. And uh, God, I thought probably about Thursday, well, I'm going to have to just haul something out of uh, out of a file, a previously used message here, and, and just go to the reserves. But uh, but uh, uh, Friday morning, the Lord dropped a fresh thought in my heart uh, today, and so uh, God is God's faithful. He's good to us. I, I appreciate I appreciate the Lord, and uh, uh, He who has called us is faithful, and He will accomplish His purposes in us. Uh, you know, he's, he's faithful to say the yay, and he's faithful to say the amen. He who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. That's what I'm trying to say to you this morning. And so uh, I'm excited to share with you a thought this morning. I was just reading uh, through the book of Acts, trying to, I don't know how many of you are, are familiar with one of our good old generals of the of the faith from Arkansas, actually, uh, but I don't know if his if he ever ministered up in this part of the world or not. But uh, his name was Don Brankel, and uh, yeah, Brother Brankel, uh, one of the best preachers, one of my top five all time. I, I love to hear Brother Don preach when he was a, when he was uh, able to preach when he was a younger man. I've seen him stand in and revival and thumb through his Bible and says, all these stories, I know there's got to be something to preach in here somewhere, <laughs> as though he didn't know what he was going to, uh, to bring. But I was waiting upon the Lord, going through the Word, and, and I felt like the Holy Spirit drew me to this story. And as I read through there, I just felt like the Holy Spirit emphasized to me, shipwrecked, but not dead, shipwrecked but not dead, and the Lord began to, uh, began to minister first to me, you know, uh, this, this year hasn't started off the way that I wanted it to. I wanted to hit the ground running on that uh, second Sunday of January and began to build and, and to move forward and, and to go, and, and I've had to cool my heels for a while because I haven't felt well still in the flesh, don't feel 100%, but I know that my God is able and He is my healer, you know, uh, Rhonda didn't get good news this last week when she went to the, I mean, it's not terrible news, but it's not what we were hoping for. Her incision isn't healing properly, and so uh, no, no removal of the boot, no starting of, of, of physical therapy, and, and uh, got to go see a, a specialist to, about that. And so, uh, you know, to somebody else, it may not look like a big thing. How many of you know that your storm is always a big thing in your life? Other people may look at it and say, well, that's not very much. Listen at what I'm going through. But, but when you're in the boat in the midst of the wind and the waves, it seems like a big thing for you. And so I'm not here to diminish anybody's struggle. I'm just here to say if you're not in a storm of life right now, just hold on. Just, you know, just hold on. Just wait. You're, you're old enough to realize that as the world turns, a storm is going to come your way. And I'm not speaking negative or without faith. I'm telling you that it's the way the world works. We're either in a storm or we're just coming out of a storm or we're preparing to go into a storm. There, there's just not anything else in this world. Somebody said, I said that one time and a guy said, oh, pastor, you need to speak, uh, you know, proclaim words of faith. Don't speak such negativity. I said, you know, the Lord Jesus told his disciples, get in the boat and go to the other side of the lake, knowing that a storm was going to bear down on them. They were right in the perfect will of God, doing what Jesus said, and still they were in the storm of their life. So it's not anything unusual for us to recognize that if I'm in a storm right now, it's going to pass. And if I'm not in a storm, I need to be readying myself for whatever tomorrow holds, right? So shipwrecked but not dead. That's the thought that's on my heart. Sometimes we can get to feel it. Maybe y'all don't. Maybe it's just Travis. We can get to feeling woe is me, you know. 
Oh, woe is me. <laughs> How come nothing ever goes my way? Oh, woe is me. Poor, pitiful me. I don't know if any of anybody else ever has pity parties, but sometimes, sometimes every once in a while, Travis George does. But I want to tell you this morning, as I have thought this week, you know, when you're not feeling well and you're staying home, you have a lot of time to think and a lot of time to pray. And I thought back to some things in life, in my life, where but for the grace of God, I wouldn't be here anymore. As just a child, one of my earliest memories that I can recollect is being in the hospital, uh, and I was about, I don't know, four or five years old, and I had, I had double pneumonia, and, and I was in the hospital because of it. But for the grace of God, I might not have survived, but God is good. And think back to nearly being in a head-on collision on the interstate somewhere in Kansas when I was 18 years old. A buddy of mine was driving, and but for the grace of God, I'm here today. I can think back of other instances and occasions just as you can where something was narrowly avoided or, you know, you ever been in one of those wrecks where the car is just mangled up but, but you barely got a cut or a scratch or, or been through a, a disease that claimed other people's lives but you came through with healing from the Lord. But for the grace of God, you know, we, we've been through this morning, it's only by the grace of God that we are here today. So if God has preserved us, don't you believe that God has a plan? God does nothing by accident. So if God has preserved us and brought us here this morning on the, the 16th of, of January in the year 2022, I believe that my God has a plan. Some of you may feel like, boy, 21, the year of 2021 was kind of a shipwreck of a year. But I want to tell you, out of shipwreck, God can bring great blessing. God can bring great things out of what appears to us to be a disaster. Some of us have experienced car wrecks that probably should have claimed our life, but God preserved us. Some of you dealt with drug abuse or alcohol abuse and have friends who died because of their abuse of drugs or their abuse of alcohol, but yet you are still standing today. Stay with me. I've got a point, I promise you. Some of us have just simply made stupid choices, <laughs> and I'm talking about me. My hand is raised. Stupidity foolishness that could have very well resulted in our death but somehow God preserved us for some reason we lived through our own carelessness right now you know that if it wasn't for the grace of God you might have been the one who died in that wreck or you might have been the one spending life in, in prison or spending decades in prison for something. You might be the one uh, who, uh, who, who suffered uh, the ill consequences of those choices. We know that. We understand. We can look back. I trust everybody in the room can look back on more than one occasion and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you preserved me and that you kept me through that situation. So let's look at Acts chapter 27, verse number 10. What's going on? Paul has been in jail for a, uh, a couple of years already. He was arrested in Jerusalem when he went to the temple to fulfill his vow. And the Jews seized upon him. And the Romans took him under their protection because the Jews were going to kill him. And he's been in jail, been in jail. And finally, Paul says, I appeal unto Caesar. So they're getting ready to send him. In fact, where we're reading is he is on his journey to Rome. He's on his journey to take his appeal of his case as a Roman citizen before the highest court in the land. And they start off, the verses before this says the first leg of their journey was very slow. The wind was against them and they weren't traveling <clears throat> at a very good speed and they struggled in the first part of the journey that leads us up to verse number 10. When much time was spent and sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them and said to them, Sirs, I perceive this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only because of the lading of the ship, but also of our lives. 
Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. How many of you know we don't always listen to good counsel? <laughs> Paul said, guys, you know, I just got this feeling we ought not sell. The first part of this trip has been tough, and it's only going to get worse. And, and, and God's told me in prayer that we, we, we ought to just stay right here. We shouldn't go any further. The time of sailing has passed, and we need to just stop and, and b- delay our journey. But, oh, the, the captain of the ship said, if I don't get to Rome, I don't get paid. And so, we're, you know, we're going to press on. i, I got to have a payday. And, and the centurion, instead of listening to Paul, he the captain of the guard, if you will. He listened to the owner of the ship, the merchant, and they sailed anyway. Man, I can tell you some of the foolish choices I've made, especially, you know, teenage and and early 20s, I was counseled not to do those things. How about you? You ever done that? I mean, counseled not to do that, not to go there, not to participate in that, you know, that, that that person really doesn't have your best interest at heart or whatever the case may be, and, and yet you did it anyway. Uh, yeah, uh, so we don't always listen. I wish I could say that I grew out of that when I was about 23 or 24, but I've made some choices between then and now that, that probably folks counseled me, maybe you ought not do that. But, but in the course, I've even been guilty of going against the, uh, just being transparent with you, I've been guilty earlier in my life of going against the witness of the Holy Spirit because I was too mad or too angry or too upset or too hurt about something. And the Holy Spirit was checking me on it, but I pressed ahead and did something anyway. We've all this morning been guilty of going against wise counsel. I could have saved myself a lot of grief, a lot of pain, a lot of trouble if I would have listened to some counsel when I was younger. I think the best learner, uh, the best teacher for me and for many of you has been making mistakes, right? You know? Oh, that's why Dad said not to do that. <laughs> oh. I, I saw something one time that said when we're little kids, we think our parents are just superheroes and, and don't do anything wrong, and then we get up to be teenagers, especially us boys, many of us, and, and we think our, our parents are just old-fashioned, stick-in-the-mud fuddy-duddies that don't understand the world anymore, and then if we're, God is gracious, by the time we're about 25 or 30, we begin to realize just how smart and wise Dad was when he was telling us those things. And so, uh, yeah, we, 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 we fail to listen. They didn't listen to Paul, and they sailed directly into the storm of their lives. Look at verse number 11 again. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. Now, I'm going to jump a few verses for time's sake. Verse 18, we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. And the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. Now, if you read all through this, you read some commentaries on this, you dig a little deeper, you find out this is like a hurricane that they're in. This isn't just some tropical storm. This isn't just some thunderstorm. This is a a cyclone, a, a hurricane that they are in. And if you read the text, you see that they struggle in this storm for not one day or two days, but for two weeks they're struggling in this storm in a small wooden sailing vessel. They're not on some giant, you know, uh, steel cargo ship that hardly notices the storm. They're in a little small vessel that's being buffeted and beaten and shaken and, and listing with the, with the storm and very, uh, you know, very difficult going. They couldn't drop the sails and go to the back and fire up the, you know, the, the, the Johnson or Evan Rude and uh, outboard motor and, and power on to some safe coast. And they're pushed by this storm. And finally, that old ship has taken on water and it's listing and the waves have been breaking over it and the wind has been blowing and the rain is coming down. And they say, we got to get rid of this cargo because it doesn't matter about all the wheat or the, the barley or the grain or whatever it is that we're hauling. Uh, now, now we've got to just try to preserve our lives. 
The cargo was going overboard to make the, the ship continue to float. And, and when all the cargo was gone overboard, they began to cut loose everything that they could live without. They began to cut loose everything that they could do without. Let me tell you something. In the storms of our life, if we'll just listen, there's something in that storm. When we go through the really tough battles, when we go through the really hard storms, it God will give us the opportunity to align our priorities. What he's saying? We'll figure out the things that we really can live with and can live without when we go through the storms of our life. You began to realize who your real friends are and who your friends are not. You began to realize just who you can really count on and who you cannot count on. You began to realize that when Jesus is all that you have, he is all that you need. You began to understand what it means that says my peace comes from God. You began to know what it means that says weariness and 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 a, a, despair and weeping may endure during the night but joy comes in the morning when you're going through those storms in life you begin to realize that you can do without Facebook and, and Twitter and, and, and sports and, and social media and, and all those other things and you understand the importance of a relationship with God through the Holy Spirit when you're walking through those storms because folks I want to tell you something when I was at my sickest last week it wasn't Facebook that made me feel any better it wasn't Twitter that made me feel better it wasn't the fact that I could find a TV program to watch that made me feel better it was when I could hear my lovely wife uh, sitting over there praying in tongues for me uh, and I knew uh, that my God was paying attention uh, I, that's uh, what made me have hope uh, and feel better and I haven't even had a horrible case thank God I wasn't so sick I had to go to the hospital thank God for that I, I, I give God praise for that many people have been far far sicker than I but nevertheless Day after day, I'm not feeling good. I can hear my wife over there praying in tongues uh, under her voice uh, as she prays for me. That, you see, folks, I'm telling you, God will use the storms of life to be a great classroom for us. And we think, oh, my friends are so important. My car, going, my mobility, being able to go and do what I want to. The money in the bank is so important. The, the job is so important. When you go through that storm and you can't work and you can't drive and the money in the bank isn't helping you out, you realize where your importance really lies and what you really need in life in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea with storm all around them and no way to get their, themselves out of the storm. You see, all that they had, their hope of gain was gone. The commerce was gone. Everything's cast overboard except the ship itself folks when Jesus is all that we have he's all that we need and let me tell you we are guilty of adding lots of things on when the when, when, when the sailing is smooth right we get so busy so busy with so many things in our life sometimes God I believe God allows us to go through the storm to remind us to get our priorities straight that all this other stuff really doesn't matter. You can live without all this other stuff, but you need Jesus as number one in your life. They lighten the ship. All right, back to the Scripture. Acts 27, 44 says, The rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they all escaped safely to land. What happened, Pastor? Well, let me tell you. They're driven by this storm. They have a method of checking the depth of the water and they notice the water is getting shallower. They cast the anchors off that boat and hope that they can hold in one spot and not be dashed to pieces upon some uh, reef or, or some sandbar or island or something in the shallow waters and, and they're just at the mercy of the storm. Paul's in a prayer meeting. <laughs> Paul comes out and says, guys, I've got good news. The Lord who I serve, the God who I serve has promised me that although this ship is going to be destroyed, not one life will be lost. So go ahead and take and eat yourself something. You've been fasting and fighting this storm. Go ahead and eat a little something, strengthen yourself, and trust God. <laughs> Let me tell you something. 
The storm you're going through may very well destroy some things in your life. Sometimes the storms we go through very well destroy things in our life that we felt like we were depending on. Sometimes we lose jobs that we didn't feel like we could live without. Sometimes relationships are broken in our life. Sometimes our health gets broken. Sometimes we go through a a bankruptcy or we go through a shipwreck. I'm not talking about an inconvenience. I'm talking about something that destroys other people. But I want want you to hear the word, the promise of the Lord in this scripture right now. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you don't have to fear any evil, for I, the Lord God, am with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will stick closer than a brother. I am in the boat beside you. I have promised that I would never leave you. So folks were facing things, and and, you know, I wish that I could prophesy that 2022 was going to be a pleasure cruise for everybody in the church. But but, but I I can't, you know, I can't say that. We're going to face things today and tomorrow. As long as we live, we're going to face challenges. But whatever the challenge, God is with you. Do not forget that he says, although the vessel may be destroyed, you're not dead. You're not going to die in this. You're going to make it. You're going to come through. Even if the vessel that is destroyed is this earthly vessel that contains our spirit, guess what? We're just stepping a little higher. We're just moving into the presence of the Almighty God. God's says nothing that is present nothing that has ever been nothing that is here now nothing that will come tomorrow will be able to take you out of my hand for I have inscribed your name on the palm of my hand I've got you you're in he says Paul I know it's scary I know it's a bad situation I know it's completely out of your power but trust me I feel like I'm supposed to say that to somebody that's either watching or sitting in the room this morning. What you're going through is frightening. It's out of your power. It's out of your control. But God says to you, trust me, I've got you. I'm with you. This is not, hey, this is not going to be the end of you. This is not going to be your destruction. I was reading in my in, in my. Yearly Bible reading. I've been just got finished reading about Joseph. When Joseph's brothers finally come down to Egypt in the height of that famine that's going on, and, and he reveals himself to them. Well, then the story goes just a little ways further that dad passes away, and the brothers who had sold him into slavery began to fret. Oh, now that dad's out of the way, he's going to get... He's going he's gonna to take his revenge on us now that dad's not here anymore. You know what Joseph says to all of that? You guys intended this for evil, but God has accomplished good in this because I have been able to save you and all of our families because of the position that God has put me in. I want to tell you, church, it may feel like the enemy has you under his boot heel, but you just flip the script on him because we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who gives us the strength. Trust that God will work all things together for the good to those who love the Lord. Even if you're losing things, you know, even... I know this goes against this, this, this whole word of faith movement that says if you're really trusting God and really have faith, then you're always going to be walking, you know. Men are always going to be giving. You're always going to be adding. Well, folks, sometimes read your New Testament because, uh, because we go through seasons where God is pruning and where things are being taken, right? Where, where, we're, where we're being cut back, just like this storm, Everything is gone except the ship, and then guess what? The ship is gone. But it says there in verse 44, they they grabbed a hold of the wreckage and made it to shore. There's a word right there for somebody this morning. Grab a hold of the wreckage of your life and trust God. Trust in the Lord. The wreckage of your job, of your health, of your Uh, you know, uh, of your family, whatever it may be that you feel like the enemy has just 
dashed upon the rocks. You grab a hold of that and you hold on. You hold on and you trust in God because greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. <laughs> Praise God. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, God has a plan. Even though there was a major storm, even though they lost all their stuff, even though the ship got destroyed, even though they were thrown into the raging sea, even so, nobody died. Nobody died. The ship is gone. The stuff is gone. Everything's gone. And now here I am with a piece of driftwood floating in the angry waves. It would be impossible that all those people, nobody died but God. But God, He preserved their lives. Somebody this morning needs to get this in your heart. I am going to make it. I am going to make it. In fact, why don't we lift our hands right now and just declare, Lord, because of your word and your strength and your power, I am going to make it. For your glory, God, to bring renown upon your name, I am going to make it. The devil thought he had me with sickness, but I'm going to make it. The devil thought he had me with family problems, Lord, but I'm going to make it. The devil thought he had me with cancer, but I'm going to make it. The devil thought he had me with discouragement and depression, but I'm going to make it. The devil thought he had me because he took away something that my heart holds dear but God I'm going to make it I'm in the sea I'm on a driftwood I'm struggling to keep my head above the water but I'm going to make it because you have promised that you are standing by me and Lord it is for your glory I'm going to make it I'm going to make it you see I'm broken this morning but I'm still coming <laughs> I'm wounded this morning, but I'm still coming. Devil ain't stopped me yet. I'm bleeding this morning, but I'm still coming. <laughs> I'm a little discouraged, but I'm still coming. I'm kind of down, but I'm still coming. I'm not who I used to be, but I'm still coming. Praise God. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm still coming. <laughs> oh, why? Because it is God who lives in me that keeps lifting me up and putting my feet on the solid rock. Though I may fall again, again and again the God that I serve will pick me up again and again and keep me moving forward I may have stumbled I may have made a mistake I may have messed up I may have sinned against God but I'm still coming because grace is greater than than all my mistakes I'm still coming I'm still moving oh I wish don't you imagine with your sanctified imagination that as that centurion and the ship owner was floating in the water with Paul, they thought, I wish we'd listened to that fella. <laughs> I wish we'd listened to him. It was too late. You can't go back and get a do-over. I've got, you know, if given the opportunity, there are several choices from my life that I'd go back and choose differently if I could do it over, but they're gone, right? And so we know even though I chose poorly... <laughs> God still has a future for me. Though I veered off the course, God is still able to get me back on the straight and narrow. Though I have wandered from his will, God is still able to make something out of my life. Though I've messed up, God's able to make my mess up into a miracle. The great glory of the awesome God is not diminished by the fact that we're stupid sometimes. <laughs> God's glory will be revealed. Just hold on to that piece of driftwood. Sometimes it's just something like your dreams, you know? What you thought life was going to be like by the time you were 50, 60, 80, whatever. And it's not that way. And sometimes that can cause us to feel like our, our life is just shipwrecked. You hold on to that piece of of driftwood until the Lord brings you to the shore and then you burn it. <laughs> I'm not going to get that far today. And you give God praise because he's about to do something wonderful, something good. 
out of your mess, God is going to make a message and give you, I know, I know you've heard that a million times, but I just need to remind Travis, and I need to remind you this morning, that don't look with the eyes of your understanding, your own human eyes, view things with faith. Trust that the God who got you in to this situation will get you through this situation. And God adds, right? God blesses. God moves us up if we continue to follow in his way. I may be confused, but bless God, I'm still following him. I'm still coming. I may be crying right now, but bless the Lord, I'm still coming. I'm not going to stop because I'm crying or because I'm confused or because I've been rejected or because I've been hurt. Oh, Lord, no. I'm not going to stop because I've been wounded. I'm not going to stop because things didn't go my way. But I am going Mm, I am going on. I'm going on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day because I believe that God has a plan. How could you make it in this crazy, messed up world if you didn't believe in a God who has a plan? And although it may be confusing to us, we trust that God who sees all and knows all has a plan. And we'll trust His plan. We'll trust his plan. I know, I know that I'm not everything that I should be. Can you agree with that statement? I know I'm not everything I should be. I'm still struggling with some bad habits and some hang-ups. I'm still wrestling with some anger and some forgiveness issues. I, I still slip up ever once in a while and I don't do it all right. I still say some things I ought not say. I still act in some ways I ought not act. I know I'm not where I should be right now, but I know that I'm moving in the right direction. Huh? How do you know, preacher? Because I can look back at who I used to be, and I can see the trajectory of my life, and I know that the Lord is leading me along the paths of righteousness for His namesake. I'm not where I ought to be or where I want to be, but I praise God, I'm not where I used to be either. <laughs> He's still working on me, and I want to let him. I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to keep allowing him to work on me. I know right now, can you know, there, you ever been, you ever been swimming in the, in the ocean when there were some fairly good waves? It's not the easiest thing in the world. Not nearly as easy as swimming in the swimming pool at the hotel, you know. It's a little difficult, and, and, uh, yeah, well, these aren't just some little waves. These are some hurricane waves that they're swimming in. You know they had to be flopping and floundering and splashing water all around and doing their best to keep their head up. Even though the promise had been delivered, you're not going to die, they're still struggling to keep their head above the water. But I want you to know it's sometimes, folks, just because we know that God has promised to bless us, doesn't mean we can just sit down and say, well, then I don't have to do anything. Because God's promised He's going to heal me or He's going to bless me or He's going to grow the church or He's going to send revival or He's going to do something. we got to keep swimming. we got to keep taking up our cross and following Him and just trusting that if I will keep doing everything that I'm supposed to do, then God will do the things that I cannot do. Does that make sense? I believe if those folks had just simply said, well, then I don't have to do anything. They'd have sunk to the bottom like a rock, <laughs> you know. But, but they did. They grabbed the pieces of driftwood, and they did their part. It reminds me of the old story from years ago about the guy who uh, lived in a town below a dam on a, on a big major lake, and the alarm started going off, and, and they were saying, you got to leave town because the dam is about to break. And he said, well, God... I believe that you're going to save me from this. So I'm just going to stay right here because I believe you're going to save me. Well, the water started coming up. <clears throat> the water started coming up, and he had to get on the roof. And a boat came by, and they said, get in the boat. We're going to take you to safety. And he said, no, I'm trusting God. God's going to keep me. The boat went on by. A little while later, when the water had risen above the roof, and he was setting in water up to his waist on top of his roof, a helicopter flew over and a rope dropped down and they said, grab the rope, we'll take you to safety. And he said, go on, help somebody else. I'm trusting in God. He's going to save me. 
the water rose and he drowned. The story goes, this fella stomped angrily up to St. Peter and said, I told everybody I was trusting in God to save me, and he let me drown. How could God allow this to happen? And St. Peter says, he sent a siren to tell you that a flood was coming. He sent a patrol boat to pick you up when the water was getting deep, and he sent a helicopter at the last minute, and you rejected all God's help. You know, sometimes God's help isn't the rolling back of the Red Sea. Amen? Sometimes we got to do our part and then thank God for his provision. I'm trying to tell you, church, God is good, and he always takes care of us. But we need to understand that God has given us the ability to do something, and we need to do our thing. Even when the storm is blowing, you got to keep praying. you got to keep trusting. you got to keep putting faith in your prayer. Even when you know that God has said it's going to be all right you've got to keep reminding yourself to keep going and to keep working and to keep moving because God is for you and he says stand having done all to stand therefore stand in other words he's saying do your part do your part do what you can do whatever that is the worship you can do, the praying you can do, the faith you can unleash, you do your part and God takes up the slack. Thank you, Lord. Send the interpretation, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Choose you. Choose. See that? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. There's the confirmation of what I'm trying to say to you. Your act may be something as simple as choosing whom you're going to believe. But you have to do your part. God's promises are conditional, right? He says, if you will, then I will. <laughs> and his part is always greater than our part. Faith of a mustard seed moves mountains, but we have to exercise that faith. We've got to believe. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. I'm telling you this morning, there's no mess that God doesn't have an answer to. There's no problem that He cannot solve. There's no choice that you have made that God cannot redeem. I'm telling you this morning, you read from Acts this 27 and 28, they all made it to land. God didn't say, whoops. Missed one. They all made it to land. God's promises are yes and amen. If he has promised, he will deliver. He will deliver. So we can just tell the devil and all the doubters, I'm still here. You've hit me. You keep coming after me. Let me tell you, you know, we've had several people say to us in the last couple of weeks, God must be getting something good ready for the Georges because you guys have been through quite a few things in the last few months. We're still here, you know. I mean, devil, you've been hitting, but, but that's all right. I'm telling you the same thing is true for you. Have faith in God and go ahead and praise Him in the storm. 
years ago, there was a song, and I'm, I'm done. I've said everything I was supposed to say. We're going to pray in just a second. Years ago, there was a song that used to get sung quite a bit. Uh, I think the lady who I enjoyed hearing singing it the most, I think her last name was McCamey, but I can't remember exactly. But she sang to God on the mountain. He's still God in the valley. When things go wrong, he'll make it right. And the God of the good times, he's still God in the bad times. The God of the day, he's still God in the night. I want to tell you, folks, shipwrecked you may very well be, but if God is on your side, you're not dead. God will redeem. God will redeem. There's, there's more to this story. Maybe next Sunday God will let me come back and, and talk about the snake and the fire and all of that stuff. But for today, this is what I'm supposed to say to you. You praise God anyway. You praise God anyway and stand upon His promises. Whatever battle, whatever fight you're fighting, stand on the promises of God. Listen to the witness of the Holy Spirit that says, Choose today who you will serve. This world, if you turn on the news, you listen to it, they're going to tell you, fear, fear, fear. Be afraid, be afraid, be afraid. But you need to listen to the word of the Lord that says, child, I've got you. This storm will not overcome you because I am your God. I am your healer. I am your provider. Oh, my goodness. Inflation and, and, and sickness and disease and, and uh, strife and, and, oh, it's all out there. Yes, it is. Man, it just, you know, it seems like over the, the last few weeks since Christmas, there's been a lot of violence just right here, pretty close to, to the church and, and to, where, to where I live. And, you know, gun violence and, and, and carjackings. And, but you know what? My God is able to keep me, and so we're going to trust in God. So this morning, I thought it would be a good thing to do as we close out our time to just Give thanks to God that we've made it this far through the storm and give thanks to God that we believe He's going to bring us all the way through. Heavenly Father, we thank You, God, that we've made it this far. We've been through trials and valleys. We've been through ups and downs. Some of us are experiencing the lowest lows of our lives right now. Some of us are in high places and praising you from the mountains. Some of us are sick and some of us are discouraged. And some of us are battling battles that nobody else even knows about. But we praise you this morning, God, and not the battle, not the storm. We don't give any glory to the enemy because great and mighty is the Lord my God. Great and mighty is he. He lifts up the banner. He runs the enemy out. He gives me strength. He causes the sun to rise and the sun to set. And he keeps my breath in his hand. I praise you, God, because you're my healer. I praise you because you have saved my soul and nothing can take away my salvation. I praise you, God, because you have promised that you will keep me in your safekeeping no matter what the enemy me does that you have built a hedge around about me. Thank you Lord God that I know that my steps are ordered by you. Thank you Lord God that I know that you never sleep and you never slumber and your eye is always looking out for me and, and, and know what I have need of before I even ask it. Thank you Lord for your blessings. Thank you Lord for your touch. I pray this morning God that as we get ready to dismiss from this worship service and go our ways today that you oh God will be with us and that you will guide us and direct us Lord I pray a special blessing God, on every one of those that are on my prayer list who are sick today, God, that you will touch me and my family. Lord, Glenn and Gloria today, Guy and Eve today, touch Brother Harold and minister, God, not only healing, touch in his body, but strengthen him, oh God, as he goes through this... Uh, this grieving, Lord, and, and dealing with the loss of his, uh, of his partner, of his spouse, of, uh, of his wife. God, touch him and walk with him. Be with the Escobar family as they battle illness and the Knight family as well. The Caverly family, God. Uh, my sister Renita, 
Pastor Mel, Lord, so many, God, others that I could probably add on the list. Many that are not here today, some just being cautious, some are sick. Lord, we pray for each one of them this morning. And we know, God, that you are able to deliver. You're able to minister. You're able to do what nobody else can. God bless each one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. These altars are open if you need to come for prayer before you go home. You're certainly welcome to. Rhonda and I are praying for you. We love you. And uh, thank you for your prayers for us. The good Lord bless you. We will not meet tonight. So many folks are sick. Uh, we're just going to stay at home this evening. And, and, uh, uh, and we'll hopefully get back on the full schedule next weekend as the Lord provides. But uh, if you need prayer this morning, if you would come right now to the altar. be happy to pray with you this morning. If not, uh, that's fine. I will just give you a dismissal prayer and we'll go our way. In fact, I'm going to pray a dismissal and then if you want prayer, you can let me know, okay? Father God, I bless the congregation right now in the name of the Lord Jesus that you would strengthen and touch each one today, Father God. Cause the, your face to shine upon them and give them peace. Lord, as we go from here, let our light shine so brightly that others may see our good works and give glory unto our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen.